Welcome back, everyone. Look who I have with us today. This is Kylie. Kylie, say hello. Hello, everyone. So Kylie is the third ex to share, and we're super excited to be doing this and, and like to have her here. And she's she has to work tomorrow, but she's staying up late with me and all y'all. Mm -hmm. So this is exciting. So um, before we get into like who you are and the whole story and everything, um, I would just like to ask the question, like, what was your initial reaction when I reached out to you? Honestly, at first I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect. And I was skeptical about even responding to you until I actually took the time to watch your podcast myself. Okay. And do you know, so how, I'm trying to think, I guess, yeah, you, you didn't respond back right away. So how many episodes were out when you had like realized there was a podcast and how many did you watch before you decided to reply? Ooh, I think I was like almost to the time when you were with your friend and y'all were talking about getting stuck in the mud and he oh, wasn't pushing. In Alabama, yeah. <laughs> what a fun time. Um, and I think after that, that like did it for me. After that, I was like, okay. So did you have a similar experience or were you like, oh shit, like, she went through the same shit I did. Like what was, what was going through your mind? Honestly, what was going through my mind was after listening to you speak, I could literally feel everything you were going through and every bit of pain you were going through and kind of going off of that, that just made me feel like I need to speak to her, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. And it's honestly, all of the other girls have basically like the same kind of story, which I think um, is part of the reason that I started the podcast, like not specifically for you guys, you know, like my husband's ex, like exes, you mm -hmm. know, like, but for everybody that listens, I want them to be like, oh, I'm not alone, you know, and right. because I felt super, super alone. And it's so crazy. So what is today? Today's the 15th of May. Mm -hmm. He like dipped out the last time it was like right around, it was like this weekend. This weekend is EDC in Las Vegas and he abandoned me for the last time EDC weekend to go and, you know, run around with that OnlyFans girl. So, mm -hmm. um, it's crazy. It's been a year. I feel like so much has happened in the year and yeah. I, I love that. And I think that the best part of all of it one, of course, is like me being healed and not wanting to jump off my roof. But two, mm -hmm. like getting to know all of you guys has been fantastic. And I just see like there's so many similarities across all of us that mm -hmm. it doesn't make it a coincidence for me anymore. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like part of me wanted to be like, I don't think he does it intentionally. Maybe he's just an idiot and like, but that leaves out accountability but now i know yeah. for certain after talking to everybody that like this is strategic yeah i mean like look it at is. all of us you, you know what i mean like right. it's just right. it's crazy so i'm glad that you responded and i'm glad that you were open to talk and share um i think huh? it's some people are like i don't want to put my life on the internet like whatever um but you know just know that you're helping people and if you know people send messages about this episode they related to something that you share i will yeah. definitely share that with you so yeah well i have nothing to lose so i'm yeah. free to share whatever <laughs> awesome all right so why don't why don't you just start with like telling everybody a little bit about you you know talk about how old you are you know um where you grew up what you do for work just okay. kind of like a bio okay so I am Kylie Bricado. I'm 35 years old. I am a single mother of two children. I have a son named Skylar. He is 15. I have a daughter named Riley, and she's nine. And I'm a single mom. 
and mm-hmm. I work my butt off for everything I have. Um, I am Italian like you, Amanda. <laughs> I could tell with that last name for sure. Yeah. Yeah. My last name is very well known where I live. Um, Angela Bricados is very well known in New Orleans. And what kind of business is that? It is Italian pastries, uh, spumoni, cannolis, everything along those lines. It's been open since 1905. Wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you stay skinny because um, <laughs> I would be eating everything up. <laughs> I work hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastry fanatic. Um, we don't have that many like really good Italian bakeries here. When I go to the East Coast, I just like max out and then I come back and I'm like, I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So you have two children and so they know that you're doing this. Yes, they both know and they both support it. They support everything I do. I'm very close with my children. I they're my best friends. They're my everything. They're my why. basically. Yeah, (laughs) Um, Yeah, they are. They both are. But I work in the medical field. Okay. Um, I like to take care of myself. My, I guess, to take care of myself, to clear my mind, I like to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if I don't, then I'm just going to blow up. <laughs> do you um, do you do like bodybuilding or I saw that you, some of the pictures that you had sent me looked like they were like past photo shoots. Yes. Okay. So... Probably, I'm trying to think, Riley's nine. So probably about five years ago, I used to compete and I used to do swimsuit modeling. But now I only work out to maintain. I don't work out for any other reason. I only work out just to keep up with everything I'm eating and doing. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. And I bet running around and with the kids and stuff too, you're kind That's of probably my workout running around with them. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, um, and you have a new puppy. Oh my gosh. He, he's outside the door right now. Like I had to bribe him with a million treats. He, he is my, I'm single. So this is my man. This is who I answer yeah. to. And this is, this is who literally is constantly yapping at me. So I'm constantly coming home early. I don't go anywhere. I don't go out or anything. Cause I feel like my dog's going to be mad at me <laughs> if I do anything. I feel that so much. I also feel like boy dogs are just like so much more in tune with female owners. Like my boy mm-hmm. dog, I swear, I swear to God, he's like my soulmate, like just in a dog form. I'm like, how do you know me so well? Doesn't even talk. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so I love that for you. Um, That's exactly how he is. He's a yeah. French bulldog. His name is Rocky mm-hmm. and he literally is attached to me. He's like such a cuddler, but I'm trying to get used to him too. Yeah. So he snores so loud. Yeah, they oh do. My oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> he is such a snorer. Like, and, and he sleeps in your bed. Okay. So I'm trying to break him out of this habit. Lately, I've been putting him outside of my room because I cannot sleep. Yeah. I can't sleep with the snoring. Like, it's that loud. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, come on. And he's so tiny. So he's only five and a half months old. And I'm yeah. like, how can a dog so little? Like make me not sleep. <laughs> their their faces are smushed. I that's the mm-hmm. the sole answer. I used to have a pug and she just would snore up and down. But yeah, um, French bulldogs are super cute, and so super cute. I'm a big dog girl, but I do love mm-hmm. Frenchies. They have like the most energy, and it's insane. Personality just, is out of this yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. The crying um, and the yap, the talking. That's a new thing. The talking. Oh my god, I saw a video. Did you see a video where like the Frenchie like sounds like an old man like screaming, dying? Like Yeah, and they got put out of their apartment because Yeah. That, okay, like, so oh we're god. on our way to that, the screeching. Really? But every time I go to record, I only have one video of him doing it. Every time I go to record him, he stops and I'm like, you would. Oh my gosh, he knows you're mm-hmm. on to him. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, hey, I know the importance of having an animal dog uh, especially a boy dog when you're single because like it's lonely out there and you know they're just love bugs so i'm glad that i'm glad that you have rocky is that like rocky balboa after rocky exactly okay okay good (laughs) he's my little fighter 
Keeping it, keeping it in the Italian. I feel like he knows I'm talking about him. I hear him outside the door right now. <laughs> like, mom, don't talk about me on a podcast. He's be like, okay, I'm about to do the most on the outside. Please <laughs> don't. Okay, so I guess to a little bit more on just like you. So, does your does your family know that you're doing this? So you said that your kids do. How about yeah. that extended family? No, everybody mm-hmm. has been asking me and I've been so busy. Mm-hmm. Like everybody that saw it on social media has been asking me and I haven't really had the time to sit down and tell them, well, this guy from about forever ago, about mm-hmm. seven, eight years ago. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. I haven't really told anybody. So I guess that they're going to see it after we record this. <laughs> I feel like maybe that's a good thing, mate, because then they'll get all of the answers all at once. I know with some of the right. other girls, uh, their families had a little bit, they had a part, like the family was involved in a, in some sort of way. So um, as we go through, you know, your, your story with Dick, um, if you want to bring up like how your family felt about him or anything initially, um, definitely do that because I think it's really mm-hmm. good insight for the other girls as well as the listeners. So I think that's a good segue. We mm-hmm. should talk about <laughs> our shared uh, ex. So how did you <laughs> how did you meet um, that person? <laughs> so I met him. We had a mutual friend, and I guess in a way through social media, he kind of crept his way through messaging me, and it started with our mutual friend. And okay. then it crept its way through messaging. And so what social media platform did he use? Is it Facebook, Instagram? Um, Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like he does a lot of like his recon work on Facebook. And mm-hmm. then he like strikes on Instagram. So the fact like, you know, the people that are like suggested friends on the bottom. Right. I feel like a lot of people have been those. And then all of a sudden they're on this podcast. Well, our mutual friend Mm -hmm. had a bunch of pictures with him and stuff. And Mm. I asked about him. And of course, everything was great when I asked. Don't you love those friends? The ones that literally have known him a long time, but they Mm -hmm. choose to only see the good like i mean i guess maybe they don't experience the bad stuff but like well i think this friend knew the bad stuff just didn't want to tell me yeah because they were kind of like covering for their friend but then once i found out the bad stuff they were like well i didn't i was in the middle i didn't want to get involved and i'm like well it's like I think, okay, so there's like a term for these people. They call them in like the narcissistic socio, like the mental health world, they call them flying monkeys. Um, And they're like the people who are just kind of always around and are always supporting despite everything that they know. So I find that interesting. I mean, that that definitely didn't happen to me, but like there have been people where I'm like, you're still talking to him? That's really fucking insane but like so be it like then i just keep my distance away from those people so what did you let's like go back to that moment um what did you think of him like looks wise what attracted you to him what attracted me to him definitely the looks um how nice he was to me how much he complimented me um at the time, before I really knew him, I thought he was a great father, and mm-hmm. that attracted me to him. Okay. So I'm trying to think back. So this is, for the listeners, let's say 2016 or mm-hmm. the end of 2015, maybe? Mm-hmm. To okay. 2016, 2016, end of 2015. Okay. So at this time, his daughter is a one, almost going to be two. Right. Okay. So I would I saw some pictures on Facebook, but mm-hmm. I didn't know that the pictures were from a while ago. Yeah. I thought it was all recent. I think that that it it's set up that way. I mean, yeah. you've been friends with him on Facebook consistently throughout, and I mean, do you remember like that she was pinned at the top of his profile for the whole entire time we were together? Well. 
when we started talking, Facebook did not have that. Didn't have that option. So you couldn't move pictures to the top or anything like that. So I just saw what he would post. Yeah. I, I feel like she's, he, he uses her as bait and it disgusts me. Um, because like, I know, I know her mother and I know how wonderful of a child she is. And it just is so Mm -hmm. disgusting. Um, and as a mother, right. You're like, how could you do that? Um, so how did it come to be that you guys like started talking? So he messaged you and then what, like what happened from there? So he started messaging me and it was a really vulnerable time and me living at the bottom of the United States Mm -hmm. (laughs) and him living way up there. I, I felt like, okay, this guy's giving me attention. You know, he's a great looking guy. So I'm going to go for it. So that's kind of how it went. So it was a vulnerable time in my life. Can I ask? why it was a vulnerable time and also yeah. if you don't feel like sharing that's totally fine um and also was he aware that it was a vulnerable time and if so yeah. how early on okay so my daughter probably was close to a year old at the time okay. and me and her dad were still kind of going back and forth but I was into myself away because I knew that it wasn't going to go any further. And we were engaged. Like we had a daughter together. It was pretty deep. Okay. And I had this good looking guy throwing himself at me. And I mean, it's a really good, like diversion, Mm -hmm. I would say, Mm -hmm. you know, um, what do they say? get over somebody you have to get under someone else i don't subscribe to that notion but i feel like (laughs) i understand that right so um okay and when you like were Mm -hmm. vulnerable and shared about this situation that you were in like how did he like respond to that i i feel like he took it full force and went right for it (laughs) Okay. He yeah. knew, he knew like I was going through a lot. Like I was completely honest with him, everything I was going through, you know, I let him know just what I went through with my daughter's dad and how it's still fresh. And it's just, we have a little one together and I'm trying to be strong for my daughter at the same time, but yeah, that's just kind of how it was. So what was i mean if i don't know i'm not i'm not gonna say that i know this but i feel like i do what was like the fairy tale like what was the goal that he kind of laid out in front of you for you and him and and like was there future like planning very initially yes he would talk to me about giving me a ring moving to new orleans so that was stuff that we did talk about. How early on was the ring conversation? Um, Probably about two and a half months in. Okay. He was going to move to New Orleans, he said. Yes. This man is out of his fucking mind. I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> if you knew, like, the shit that he says about the South, I'm like. Uh, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's wild. And now he lives in Denver, the place he hates the most. Well, back and forth, but okay. So you, you fell for him. He's handsome. And Mm -hmm. like, you're, you're basically like, this is going to help me like move on in a healthy way. He's being supportive. Um, Was he outwardly Mormon at the time? Did you know that about him? Did not, did not know any of that. Um, I thought his family lived in Vegas. I did not know the extent of everything until deeper on. Okay. Did he tell you about his criminal history record? So, um, I did not know about that until my first time going to Vegas to see him. Okay. And we took a trip to, um, his parole officer. We went to go see him. What a really good first trip for you. Yeah. So I kind of did not know what I was getting myself into. And I was already 
in Las Vegas and he had an appointment and next thing you knew, you knew I flew out there and we were Ubering to the courthouse and I was like, why are we Ubering? And it's because he didn't have a vehicle. So we had an Uber. That's wild. Uh, where did he live at the time? Um, he lived on the outskirts of Las Vegas. I think it was Summerlin. Okay. Summerlin. Did he mm -hmm. have his own apartment or did he, ha did he live with somebody? He had his own apartment. Okay. Was he on house arrest? No, not okay. at the time, but he was on, what is that called again? Just like probation or yes, yes, yeah, yes. probation. Okay. Yes. All right. So you went to go see his parole officer. Um, mm -hmm. and now you're, you're in his, his zone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what did that, what did that trip look like? I guess, was it just like kind of him showing you well, around? I've never known anybody to be on parole. <laughs> so I kind of, I was, I remember waiting outside of the place and he didn't have cell phone service inside of the place or he couldn't have his phone on. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I kind of was like lost, like waiting outside of the place. Like, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know exactly everything until that appointment was over with. And it was a couple hours. Okay. So you get there. Is it mm -hmm. the first place that you guys go to? Or I mean, like no. Okay, no. so you go to this place, and then he's in there, and you, you're you like, I don't even know what's going on, and you come out, and so what do you ask him? Do you say, like, why are, why are we here? Yeah, and he said we would talk about it later. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so mm. how much later did you guys end up having that very serious conversation? Until we got home. It was later on that night, and he told me someone that he was with accused him of basically assault. Okay. He, mm -hmm. did he go into detail? He did not. When did you find out the truth? Later on, later on, after being with him, a lot of people that was with him started to reach out to me as like warnings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did that like, was it shocking? How did it, how did it make you feel? Cause I mean, so if I guess I'm like really, really, really interested in this whole, this whole thing right now. So this is it's just so everyone knows I have not heard Kylie's story like at all yet. So this is my, this is real reaction. Um, Dick has a felony for strangulation. It was a violent right. felony and he was in jail for, I think like 90 days. Um, yeah. About, he was on house arrest for I don't know how long and then su supervision, parole, whatever the hell they call right. it. Um, but a violent felony for, for strangling, um, attempting to strangle his ex, yeah. uh, Joanna, who shared prior. So if you haven't heard that, go back and listen to hers and then come mm -hmm. back and pick up here because we're in chronological. So, right. Okay. How did, have you heard the episode, Joanna's episode? Okay. Mm -hmm. How he, he put his arm was, around her neck. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the the right here and that ass dinner is half out. That sounds totally, about right. Totally. Like I didn't know mm -hmm. any of this, but I will say that he was very like forthcoming and like dare I say excited to tell me about it. Almost in a way where it was like, Yeah, I have a criminal record. Oh shit, really? Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a violent felony for strangulation. And no, I'm like, he didn't tell me any of that. I I found out about it when he said that he had an appointment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, that was all news to my ears. Did it surprise you that the person that you had been with for a little while could do something like that? Yes, it did. Had he I ever didn't... been violent with you or? No, no. He definitely had his way with words and he could get nasty mm -hmm. with his words and, but never physical with me. Okay. So in total, how long would you say that you guys dated? Um, probably six and a half, seven months. 
Okay. And when along that timeline is this first Las Vegas trip? Um, it had to be at least three weeks in. Three weeks in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what kind of things would he say to you? In what way? <laughs> so you said he had a way with words and like could be nasty. Uh, uh like I guess He's elaborate. Very on verbally that. abusive. Um, he would tell me. Okay, so I was a single mom. He would tell me. At the time, I was in school still, and I was a cocktail waitress at a strip club. And he would always throw in my face, um, you're just a stripper, you're a whore, you're all of these things. And basically, it would be along those lines. He would tell me I was fat. <laughs> he would tell me I was fat, and I was not fat at all. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. What would prompt these outbursts from him? Like, why would he start being mean to you? Um, I feel like when he wanted to do what he wanted to do, okay. um, it would be a lot of different times when he would block me on social media or mm -hmm. block my phone number. He would nitpick with me. Yeah. And was this like texting verbal abuse or yes i guess because you guys there were long time distance, right so yeah there was a time i'll never forget it he actually sent me flowers and i could not thank him for the flowers because he had my phone number blocked it's mm -hmm. insanity but it, it's and i didn't even know that amazon delivered flowers either <laughs> until <laughs> then he does for for certain. He 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 ordered like twelve dozen during our divorce for his uh, Denver girlfriend. Um, okay, so you couldn't thank him for flowers. You you basically uh -huh. like would not know like when he would block you. You would just find out by sending the message, and then it just didn't yeah, go through. Yeah, that's when I knew he was like up to no good. Right. Okay, so it's kind of like tumultuous. Um, mm -hmm. Would you? Like, I guess, what was, like, the dynamic of your arguments? So, for me, for example, when I was with him, I was a very, like, non-confrontational arguer. He would go, like, balls to the wall up here, and I'd be like, bro, why are you swearing? I'm going to walk away until you are going to talk like a grown-up. That's how I would do it. Did right. you – were you like that, or were you, like, the typical Italian, just, like, give it back? Um, I feel like in a way I would try to remain calm because I was all the way in New Orleans. I couldn't do anything. Yeah. I wasn't like in his face at the time. Like he was way up there. I was way down here. Mm -hmm. So I would remain calm as much as I could. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. hey, I'm sorry because I know exactly how that feels. I guess I couldn't. I. He would I make couldn't... me feel crazy. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I couldn't imagine being in a long distance relationship with him because being in, living with him and seeing him every day, it was mm -hmm. fucking terrible. So yeah. I can imagine that there was like a lot of suspicion and stuff that kind mm -hmm. of built up um, in your mind. Like you, you probably were right. like, he's being sneaky, right? Right. Well, there was a time when he came into New Orleans and he stayed for a good two and a half weeks and I kind of didn't know what it was like, you know, to, yeah. to like have him, I guess, live with me in a way mm -hmm. until then. Okay. So is that like chronological? So he, you went there first and then he came by you and he stayed with you for, would you say two, two, three weeks or? He, pretty much. Yeah. Until and I was like, okay, I think this is, it's time for you to go home. <laughs> that's wild. So when he, like said, hey, I'm going to come see you. It wasn't, hey, I'm going to come see you and stay for three weeks. It's, hey, yeah. I'm going to come see you. And it was literally played by ear. We went to the beach and we had a little mini vacation. And when we got back, he was supposed to go home. And he literally was staying. He, I was at work and he was driving my car, doing whatever he wanted and wasn't answering my phone calls. While he had your car? Yes. Okay. I totally get it. Um, he literally took my whole life, so I fucking feel you, dude. Um, yeah. So you have children at this time, okay? So let's talk about let's talk about how 
integrated into their life because I mean, they're your life. Now he's kind of squatting like he did and right. does. What was that dynamic like for your children and how did how did he treat them and all that? So it was chaotic. It was chaotic because my daughter was still little and he was trying to overstep her father mm -hmm. and it was creating a lot of chaos and it got to the point where Riley's dad was like, he's got to go. He's got to go. Riley's dad had drove over to my house when I was at work one night and my daughter's dad and Dick had words. Okay. And it wasn't nice. And Dick literally locked himself in my house that night. And he was so big and bad when I was at work with Riley's dad until Riley's dad drove there. And then Dick didn't come outside of my house. And I didn't have any idea about it until after the fact. So that's pretty crazy because, I mean... It's crazy, but it's not surprising that he would talk a lot of shit and then hide because I feel like yeah. I feel like when I think of Dick, I think of like a guy who like goes like this, like and like blows their muscles up, but they're not the real. You know, <laughs> yeah. the so like all bark, no bite, kind of. Yeah, uh, he was literally he... telling Riley's dad, he was like, "This is my daughter." Like it was, it was. He was going a little too far, you know. Okay, he was like pressing every button he possibly could. So. Two questions. So was he, I guess, uh, was he alone, like, watching the kids while you were at work and you felt comfortable no. with that or no? No. Okay. No. He was alone at my house, but mm -hmm. no, he wasn't babysitting. Okay. Did he ever, like, offer or, like, try yes. and get you to he allow him to? Okay. Yes, but I never let him. Well, thank the Lord for that. I know. Um. How would he uh, antagonize your, your ex? Like, how would he communicate with him? Tell him that this is his daughter, that he's going to marry me, and it won't be long till he's gone. Just basically, like, just push any button he possibly could. On, like, Facebook? Did he have his phone number? Um... <laughs> so, at the time, this was Instagram... And Dick would tag my child's father in whatever he could just to piss him off and just take it and turn it and start so much shit that he possibly could. Oh, my goodness. And this is and I guess he didn't realize that my child's father is actually about that life and drove yeah. 45 minutes away to my house to be like, okay, you got all this to say. Right. right. Yeah. Side. Like, yeah. So he comes over and he's like, you don't disrespect me like that. And then Dick. Yeah, and I'm at work. I'm at work. at work. Okay. That's so wild. How yeah. long. Dick, you have to go back home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <sighs> you're doing the most. Like you need to go back home, Dick. Like you're starting so much stuff. Me and my daughter's dad already aren't getting along and all you're doing is creating the worst. Like I remember he literally like sent my daughter's dad a picture of him and my daughter. What? And it wasn't a picture that was on social media that he could have just saw on his own. Yeah. So he did it basically to start shit. He is, um, he's a fucking he's a psychopath I know. that's I know. actually super super crazy so okay yeah. um how long were you guys dating before you felt comfortable introducing him to your children and what were their reactions like were they standoffish like what how did they feel i, I mean i know your daughter was super young but your son um my son didn't really care to like talk to him <laughs> son would ask me he would, my son was still little at the time but he would say mom what, what's wrong with the way that he talks like something's wrong <laughs> and I'll never forget that like I'll never forget that my son said that because I'm like what does he mean oh my goodness 
That probably just validated all of the listeners so much because they're like all of them all the time. They're like, how could you even deal with that? I didn't notice it that much. And my my son, he, I'm guessing he was probably about eight or nine at the time. And I'm like, how can an eight or nine year old notice something like that? And I can't. Wow. That's just like, what's wrong with him, mom? Something's wrong. (laughs) So knowing that, I mean, knowing how manipulative and controlling Dick is, um, I mean, I know you guys are long distance, but now he's kind of like squatting with you, like, and he's Uh starting shit with your ex. So did he ever like say, did he ever give you like an ultimatum? Like you need to stop talking to your ex. Like I'll, I'll be I'm going to be your only man or like anything like that. No, he did not. But in a way I felt like he was guilting me because once I told him like, you need to go back home. He's like, okay, well, I really want to be with you. I want to make this work. Like I'm not trying to make things worse. And I guess he knew like there was no ultimatum when it came to that, you know? I mean, good on you for staying strong. I can almost guarantee that he was scared shitless by your ex. So, like, that's that's a man. You know, like, don't disrespect me or my child. And even, like, yeah. my child's mother. Like, you know, right. um, do you guys, you and your ex have a good relationship now? Yes, we do okay. now. Um, it took a very long time. Yeah. But, yeah, like, we can co-parent, like, best friends. And I'm so thankful. There's so many people that ask me, like, how how do y'all do that? Like, how do y'all, how can y'all have joint birthday parties? How can mm-hmm. you go meet his girlfriend halfway on a Friday or go have wine with his girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so thankful that we have a relationship like that for, you know, my daughter. I want my daughter to have a life that she doesn't have to heal from, you know? Yeah, I feel that. Did you find it strange that he wanted to basically like claim your children, but he was totally like, where's his? Did right. that, did so you ask him about I did that? not know the extent of his daughter until after the fact of that. So I thought in a way like, oh, he really cares about me. You know, he cares about my kids, but it was, he was probably clinging to my daughter because he didn't have his daughter. Yeah. He had no, he had no, you know what? He actually may. Oh no, 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 no. He had just, he he had just, I thought he did. Yeah. He had just relinquished the rights. So if we go in chronological order, so it's baby mama, baby mama has the baby, then it's Joanna and then Mm -hmm. During Joanna, he signs off his rights, and then he meets you. Right. So, actually, it's not – we're not chronological because Rohana is actually, like, during and after, so we'll get into that. But so Hmm. how did that conversation come up about him not having his rights? I told him that he needs to fight for his daughter, and from my understanding, he was trying to. But he was not in real life. He wasn't. Did he ever say things about, uh, I would say, would, future faking? Like, hey, all of our kids together, like one yes. happy family? Yes. He would make me feel like that that would be the end game. But mm-hmm. he would say, like, his child's mother was keeping the child away from him. He didn't tell me the actual whole truth of what was going on. He would make me feel like the child's mother was the worst person, the worst enemy. Yeah, that's the name of the game. Definitely demonizes her from like the very beginning. Right. Was the end game for him to come and be with you in New Orleans or was it was he trying to bring you back to Las Vegas at any point? It was supposed to be him moving to New Orleans and him going to Las Vegas to still have a relationship with his daughter. He was going to go back and forth. Okay. That's really wild now if you if you think about it in the terms of, like, the timeline. He made it like, seem like it was easy. Like, yeah. it would have been easy for him. 
Yeah, I mean, that's just so crazy that he literally had just given up the rights, but now he's faking to you that he she's either in his life at the beginning and then afterwards you're like, no, I'm trying to fight to get her back. Right. Okay. Um, have you ever reached out to his daughter's mother? Yes, I did. Okay. And at first she did not want to converse with me until me and Dick had broken up. Okay. And did mm -hmm. you end up talking to her after you guys broke up? Yes, I did. And what did that consist of? It was really hard because I wanted him to have a relationship with his daughter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand the whole truth because I didn't realize that the mother was actually protecting the daughter from him. Same. Yeah. So I was thinking in my head that she was the bad guy. In reality, she was not the bad guy. She was just being a mother, any mother that cares about their child. Yeah, I think that that was and still is like a really big, um, I don't, I guess regret maybe is the wrong word. But like, I think about it often um, because I was only going off of like, we both were only going off of what we knew as the truth. And in terms of like finding out the actual truth, normally you would probably mm. try and get both sides of the story. But when the mm. person that you're in a relationship with is being like, she's a prostitute, she, you know, like all of the horrible things that, that she mm -hmm. says about her. Um, it's like, you, you don't even think that you, they would even talk to you. You don't even want to talk to them. You're like, I'm good listening to you, you know? Right. So I, I feel bad about that too. But mm -hmm. thankfully, I, thankfully nothing came of, of the effort. So. Right. I went off of what he told me and then when that was towards the end, that's eventually when she would converse with me. Did he ever call you a bad mom or comment on your parenting in any negative way? As part of like his uh, verbal emotional abuse? No, his verbal abuse would be more so the name calling and it would be towards your whore. Ironic. Would say ironic. Like so ironic given mm -hmm. his profession um which kind of is a good segue were mm -hmm. were you like how can you stay here for three weeks like don't you have a job like what what did you know about his career so um when he came to new orleans we we were going on a little get away we went to biloxi mississippi and while we were there he went to the casino next door at the golden nugget and i didn't think anything of it and he starts gambling and while he starts gambling he's winning money mm -hmm. and he's winning like thousands of dollars and i'm not thinking anything of it like i said at the time i had no idea you know, I thought he got all of this money from, like, personal training. He had money saved. Yeah. And he was just racking up his money while we were in Biloxi. He was gambling. So, okay, two questions on that. First, mm -hmm. before the before going to Biloxi, did – what was your understanding of his financial situation? Like, did he – um? Did he present himself as being like well off or yes. like how? Oh, okay. Yeah, he did. And uh, that's what I thought, you know, like. Why did you think, why did you think that though? Like what visually or like, what did he do to, to make it seem like that was real life? Just the way that he would flaunt things and he was very showboat. So that's basically what why i thought that you know he's making money doing mm -hmm. all the training and stuff like that is this around the time that he had billboards of himself in las vegas no and, and his clothing company or is that different okay was it one something the clothing yeah. company yeah just like okay. stupid 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 shirts but yeah yes um okay. i so i guess so in a way it was around that time but 
Okay. I knew that it wasn't really going that great with it because I remember him sending like messages to people on Facebook uh, about like liking the page and stuff like that. The one company. And I didn't even know anything about it until like somebody had told me. That's so wild. Okay. So I know both of these stories. So the, to mm-hmm. go back to the number one clothing, right. Um, mm-hmm. Even when he was with Joanna, it was like his job, like basically like what he woke up and did every morning aside from all of the the gay sex work um, was send out as many messages on Facebook as possible to people because mm-hmm. Facebook didn't have like a limit. You could send out thousands of messages to people. And mm-hmm. um, I think I said this in the last episode, but he basically would be like, if you send out a thousand messages, the statistics are, you know, like all savant. And he's like, you'll at least mm-hmm. get 10 people to buy a hundred dollar package. And then boom, you made a thousand dollars that day. And that was his job. If he did that, then he was successful. So I totally like, that's crazy because it lives on because as you can see, right, it was with Joanna and mm-hmm. it's with you. It fucking worked all of its way, all the way to 2021, 22. So, and then the Biloxi trip, When we were in Alabama and it was that episode where I told you that my girlfriend got stuck in the mud and he was like, "Mm, I already know what you're saying. (laughs) He was like, I, so I've never been down to Gulf Shores, but I love Alabama so much. And he was like, yeah, you know, maybe we should go, but I really love Biloxi. And I was like, what? The the area there and like the beach is terrible. It's not the casinos. Oh, he told me it was, (laughs) he told me it was so beautiful. But if it's because like, there's the nuggets tanks. there. Like, <laughs> that, that's just so crazy. Okay. So do you have any idea um, how much money he won? And what was he playing to? Um, so I'm not a gambler, so I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But he was on the machines, okay. if that matters. But I know he won close to like $3,000. Three zero or, or three? Three thousand. Okay, three thousand. Oh, small fish those days, Dick. <laughs> right. Okay, that's your first experience with him gambling, then. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't think anything of it. I'm just like, okay, he's lucky. Okay. Yeah. And what did you think later? Well. I didn't know much about it later until probably my second or third trip in Vegas when he was gambling at the gas station. <laughs> I think it might have been the Seven Eleven, And I was like, what are you doing at the gas station? And he was, he was gambling at the gas station. <laughs> While you were in to visit him. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Sometimes I get so embarrassed that I was married to such a fucking degenerate it's really I didn't know crazy. what a 7-eleven was until him <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there's i i just can't what do you mean i know so he would just leave you at his apartment yes they're not they're not bad okay um love that this is bringing to light that if they're telling you they see their kids or their kid's mother is the issue that in fact it's your cue to run. Yeah, that's actually very true. I think that yeah. a good man, and I mean, you can attest to this with with your ex, like a good man wants somebody to respect his baby mama. Right. Right? right. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that's far-fetched, but I think that it's not the norm. So... I agree. Yeah, that's a... I think that anybody who, when you first start dating them, they start talking shit about people that you have never even met and have no idea, like, how they fit into the puzzle. That's, that's a red flag. How I, you know, but I think that, like, we take it in some way as, like, them being open and honest and vulnerable. So, like, oh, he's sharing. He's sharing. Mm -hmm. Being emotional. He's telling me, you know, like, this deep stuff. And well, that's then, what I thought at the time. Right. But if like now you look back, you're like, it all made him the victim. Right. So was there ever a time where he was like, yeah, you know, I fucked up there. It's like, I'd never mm. heard that ever. No, yeah. no. Even when I knew, found out the truth, 
he made me feel like he was basically conned into signing his rights over. Yeah. I think the story that he told me was that his baby mama um, was aware. Made me feel like he had no choice because this right. was when he got out of jail. Yeah. And he had no choice, basically, but to sign his rights over when in all actuality, he signed his rights over beforehand. Yeah. And he didn't want to pay child support. What he had said was that he that she knew about past uh, like criminal stuff that he did, um, like selling drugs and and Molly and and Coke and all that stuff. And and that she was like, if you don't sign the rights over, I'm going to tell on you. Right. And and That's he had told me, me again with the timeline, I didn't know what the real timeline was, but he was like, I was on parole, so I had to. And it's like, you did it before you even attempted to strangle Joanna. So Right. Right. right? Like, isn't okay, here's he a came good... up with it. He fabricated his own story after the fact. He lives in, in a fabricated world. Denial. Um after hearing Joanna's story about her experience with dick and his Uh daughter when he did have her around what how did you feel about that ah man after you know hearing what she went through that I honestly could feel everything that she was going through. Nobody should ever have to go through that. I I honestly, I I don't even know. Like, that makes me want to even just almost cry because no woman should ever have to go through that, you know? Mm -hmm. To where they feel like, you know, the person they love is now, you know trying to take them out of this world or strangle them putting their hands on them yeah i i felt like i could feel her pain too as well you know she's so strong and you know i she said that she repressed it for a really long time and then it all came back i think when she was watching a movie and it's like relapsing almost yeah and I can only imagine, you know, and I've been through some terrible situations, but not that bad, you know, as what she went through. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about what Joanna relayed regarding how Dick treated his daughter during that time? Do you remember what she had said? He treated her as if, as if she didn't matter. Yeah, leaving leaving her in her car seat, not changing her diapers, like all of like that. Like neglecting stuff. her. Yeah, totally, one hundred percent. That's horrible, and I feel like you know, any parent would take that, you know, as it's painful to even listen to that. Like this right. little, this child that looks exactly like you, your little person, your little human. I can't even imagine, you know. I. When I found out about all of that stuff, I think that that out of everything in the whole entire story about Dick, that truthfully is the most shocking, painful. shocking and painful to me because it is. I think about people who, who, yeah, I mean, have I, kids. I, who, have who, kids. Have, who have kids and it's just like, how could you, how could you put her on Facebook and be like, I'm the best dad. I'm the best dad. And then and that's what he did. And he portrayed himself as, you know, this great father. And yeah. he's not. Well, good on you for having the intuition or whatever it was that made you say, no, I'm not going to let you watch my kids. And, you right. know, like some, like, I believe that females have intuition and we know I think mine was broken for a little while, but like you knew and like good on you that you protected your children from, Mm -hmm. from that because you had no idea. I'm thankful because I'm thankful I didn't go any deeper in because the way he portrayed himself, you know, I was thinking he was the best thing ever, you know, like where has this guy been my whole life? Yeah, I can 1000% relate to that. So, okay, where are we at 
in the timeline. So Biloxi, is there anything that is super, that super sticks out like after your trip? Like, did he just go back home after that or he came to stay with you? What, after Biloxi, we oh, that did was go the back. Weeks. It was the stuff with Riley's dad. Okay, okay. And that's when I told him, like, I can't anymore. Mm -hmm. And he went back home and, of course, he was trying to guilt me and stuff once he was back home, like, making me feel like he really wanted the best for me and and it still carried on after that. Okay, so you essentially ended things because you were like, this is too much with Riley's dad. Okay. Yes. Well, that's a really good boundary and good for you for having those even back then. Um, mm -hmm. So when he went back to Las Vegas, you said that he he wanted the best for you. But was that the best for you, like, absent of him? Or did he was he still trying to be with you? I think he wanted the best for me as if he wanted me to still have me underneath him. Like, he did not want me to move on from him. What What would he say that would allude to that? I'm not going to get any better than him. And just somebody that's going to accept me and, you know, my two kids... My gosh. Except yeah. you. That's absolutely wild. Yeah. So I guess like the elephant in the room really is, is when did you find out the truth about what he did and does for a living? After that last trip that he had in New Orleans, um, once he went back to Vegas, um, that mutual friend that we had uh, knew all the stuff that I was going through mm -hmm. and decided to kind of let me in and showed me a picture that was very inappropriate. And I had no idea. And I guess everything started to shed light. Yeah, you're like, oh, it kind of makes sense. And I'm like, why didn't sense. you tell me before? And it's like, they're protecting them, but why weren't you protecting me and my kids? And that's kind of where it went from there. When you, so when you got sent the picture, I can only imagine what picture it was. Um, did you do any additional research and find other stuff on your own? No. No? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Because I had found out along with that, that he had created a GoFundMe to make money. And it was saying that someone was in a car accident or something like that. And I did like my research uh -huh. and I found out that he was collecting money off of something that didn't even happen. He made a yeah, he made go fund me. Yes. Ooh, this is new information. Do you see my face being like, <gasps> yeah, about an accident? Yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's good information. I'm putting it in the file yeah. cabinet. Um, <laughs> what a fucking psychopath. I know. <sighs> so, did you confront him about him being a sex worker for men? I did not. Not ever? No. And what was your thinking in that? I didn't want to believe that it was real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you continue to to talk with him thinking that it wasn't real and that maybe you guys could still work out after you found that out? Um, It was talking here and there. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't as consistent because he, <laughs> all these women 
on social media and stuff that I would see him talking to and I would think that he's just training them. Mm -hmm. Um, it was but all becoming like too much. So it wasn't really, it was over and done with at that point. I didn't feel the need to go in any deeper when it came to all that. Good for you. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, seriously, because mm-hmm. I think that it's in our nature. There was to... no, like, he couldn't justify it. You yeah. know, like, the things that I've seen. Like, he couldn't wiggle his way around it. It was kind of just like, this is the law and this is what it is. And he can't really lie. He did post me and then he would delete me all the time. Hi. Uh, so he did post you, but because Rohana was saying that she, when she had met him initially, that she saw like that he, he had a girlfriend yeah he had a girlfriend and i was the girlfriend that rohana was picking out the flowers and he was you know i guess love bombing her at the time saying i do all these things and stuff for my girlfriend i was the girlfriend and i thought rohana was just you know a girl that he was doing online training with yeah when all actuality she was the girl that was coming in next from Washington. Right, yeah. She, and she, she I didn't there. think anything of it because at the time she had a boyfriend. Right, okay. Yeah, that is a, that's just, I mean, it's, I actually, I'm super proud of you for like not have, like not needing to know anymore. Um, right. You know, when we did our pre-call and, and obviously we've been talking for a little while, you know, mm-hmm. you were sharing some stuff with me about, um, like him sharing location and, you know, saying he was one place and then he would be at another place. Was that something that I don't, did you watch his location a lot? I guess to point blank, like to see if he was lying. Because I guess it was so much different then than it it is now. Mm -hmm. And because he lived out of state. So I would feel like if I would see that he is anywhere, like, on the strip or at the casino, that's, like, normal. Yeah. He uses it as a control tactic, though. It's right. Like, hey, I'm going to give this to you because I trust you and I want you to trust me. But then if he wants well, to just throw that, the pot. He would do that. He would do that. But it became wore out at a point because... The whole sharing the location and blocking and stuff, it became old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really, really wild. Have you ever spoken to her? Rohana? We would argue. <laughs> <laughs> that- we would butt heads, but I mean, it's way different now. But at the time, I would think of her as the bad guy because... I would be, I would think, you know, this is the girl that's trying to take my boyfriend away from me and this, that, and the other. And I would actually saw like messages not that long ago when I was trying to brush up on the situation and I was telling her like, like, who do you think you are? You're in a relationship laying next to your boyfriend, but you're texting my boyfriend right? at the time. So I would basically see her as the bad guy. I mean, that's what he does, though. He turns all of us against each other. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that during my relationship with him that I don't really think that he said anything bad about you. Um, He definitely didn't say anything bad about Rohana. It was really just like everybody else. And, you know, kind of what I gather from that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there, aside from like the emotional and the verbal abuse, Mm -hmm. there hasn't been any real like big blowout things like being strangled or yeah. know, being being abandoned or stealing money or anything that he would need to cover up with this whole like demonizing kind of methodology no but in a way I feel like I wasn't really exposed to that because we did not technically live together yeah You mentioned also a time that you, I think it, you said you and your cousin had went to to see him. 
and that what how what did she what did other people think of him i mean aside from your son being like he talks funny um he was full of himself uh what am i doing <laughs> what am i doing with this guy um i'll never forget uh we went to a Saints game, mm-hmm. and after the Saints game, we were at a place eating, and there was a bunch of people that I knew, like, in the area, and he decided he was going to take his shirt off and sit at the table that we were eating at without a shirt on, just basically to strike attention. In a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> That's He's fucking so <laughs> weird and crazy. Like, basically, look at me. Were you, are you a person that is like, hey, look at me? I, do you like do you like attention, or are you kind of did that? I did wanted to feel? crawl under the table, <laughs> and I was just highly embarrassed. And I'm like, put your shirt on. He's like, no. My I goodness. wanted to leave him at the table. I'm just like, you cannot be doing this right now. Did he tell you that he was a, a IFBB pro? No. No. Mm-mm. Interesting. I wonder what where in the timeline that that comes in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything else that you can think of that is really like big? Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys were together for 6 months. Uh-huh. You met your children. Mhm. Uh-huh. He and then I mean you guys took some trips. He was there. He squatted for a little bit, and then he left after you told him to leave and that it wasn't a good thing. Did he ever like try to come back? Did he come back? Um, he he did try, mm-hmm. but I just wasn't allowing it. You know, mm-hmm. he would try to text me and stuff and email, but. Mm-mm. And how did your kids feel about him not being in the picture anymore? they're like bye yeah pretty much bye weird talker he wasn't missed (laughs) (laughs) okay so when dick was around rohana i don't know how he presented that to you was that someone he was training or like how did how did he 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 was a client okay he was he was doing um meal plans for her and workout plans that's so crazy. He's never done one of those a day in his goddamn life. Yeah. Um, did he, like, demonize her? Did he make her, like, did he do anything to deter you from, like, reaching out to her? No. Just was like, that's a client. Like, you have no no need to yeah. worry. Pretty much. And okay. she has a boyfriend. You do. Okay. Did he tell you that she had a boyfriend? Or did you know that from from research or? Both. Both? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. Was there ever a time... Sorry, I'm just, like, rapid-firing questions at you. Like, you can pause. <laughs> it's okay. So much. Um, did you ever pay for anything for him? Everything. What... Tell me, tell me about that. Like, in... in Because that's very important in the story, because that's really why he does essentially all of this. Yeah. So that was kind of exhausting to me when he came to my hometown and I felt like I was paying for everything. And I literally was working and at the time, in a way, I was living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And here he is, you know, staying at my house for free and doing we're going out to eat we're doing all these things and here i am you know working my ass off being a single mom and i'm paying for me myself my kids and him was it on the pretense of like hey get this for me i'll pay you back or he just expected that he expected it did he ever like Aside from flowers, did he ever buy you gifts or do, like, what was a love bomb yeah. from Dick? Like, what did that Words. look like? Words? Words. Okay. Words and, um, I guess, spirit flights. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so he, he would spirit fly you to Las Vegas. Yeah. How romantic. Yeah. That's, really. that's wild. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm happy that you mm-hmm. didn't have to endure any physical abuse. I'm happy that you had the intuition to know, like, I'm not going to allow this person to be around my children. I'm happy your child right. knew, like, there's something fucking weird with this guy. Um, I'm glad they don't remember the, anything of him. I think that that's, I mean, that's the best possible scenario, you know, like, right. I think that we all go through, I mean, here's the thing. And you said it, like, you literally said exactly what I would have said right now is like, you were in a very vulnerable situation. And I think as women, when we're thinking about like getting back out there after something, Mm -hmm. there's like two options. Either we can pretend like everything's okay, but like Mm -hmm. we know that we're not going to be able to like maintain that because we're too emotional. I'm laughing because Rocky's paw is under my door. (laughs) Oh, Oh, hi. Um, I'm here, so. And then the other option is we're just going to be open and tell you everything that we have going on in our life right now and hope that you accept it. And we don't ever think that if we're that open and honest, that someone's going to literally use it against us. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. I think that a lot of people, a lot of listeners have reached out and said, like, I never realized how predatorial men are towards women in vulnerable situations. And yeah. also – how vulnerable situations can look like so many things. Yeah. Something that might make you vulnerable might be like a win for me in some respect. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just about, he really kind of like digs into like the psyche and is like, how do I control her? Because I know this information. Well, he's done it so many times. He's a professional at it at this point. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's very, very true. Very, yeah. very true. Um, well, damn. Mm-hmm. How much money in total would you say that you spent on him? Okay, so we're going back. A couple thousand at least. Okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> lucky. You're lucky. And you know what? Fuck him seriously for taking money out of your pocket that should have... That can only be reimbursed for all the money I've spent. (laughs) Like, it should have gone to your children. Like... Right. Was there anything about you that you shared with him initially? Like hobbies or um, things you like to do that he was like, oh my gosh, me too. I love that. Man, no, because at the time I was into the whole working out Mm -hmm. and just focusing on the way I look. And obviously that was something he really, really liked. So that was my hobby at the time. So that was the main thing that we had in common. Okay. Yeah. The working out. And I mean, that's the, it's the same with Rohana too. Um, It was convenient. Yeah. Did you guys work out together when he would come into town? Okay. Did he, did he prompt that or was that something you were like, let's go work out together? Me. You? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, from my understanding and I mean, my experience too, is that he doesn't like to work out with other people. He uses like the gym time as the time for him to like do all of his secret shit. So, yeah. Well, I felt like if I wouldn't have initiated us going to work out together, we wouldn't have. Yeah, no. He he actually told me when we first started uh, seeing each other, he was like, I'm going to get you into the best shape that you've ever been in in your life. And I was like, I don't – is that a compl- – like, what the fuck is that? Because it's like right. – you just told me that I was so beautiful. Like I knew that I could lose weight, but, and I was already self-conscious about it. And then he like doubles down with that, but almost puts it in a way where it's like, he loves me cause he's going to do it. I'm, right. I'm, you know, like I'm like this like project and I don't, right. truthfully, it felt good to be somebody's project instead of the other way around. So, um, right. yeah. But then as it turns out, all of the nutrition plans and the workout plans that he said that he would send to other people, all of those 
it it's just it's the same one it's not custom he sent the same one to me it was in his notes and i later found out that it was one that an actual personal trainer in scottsdale who i know he sold it to dick dick bought it for 99 dollars or something and dick took this guy's name off of it and then he and resells it yeah it. It's, it literally is plagiarism so right yeah um did dick make you eat healthy food while he ate like shit Um, he made me eat healthy food if I bought it and meal prepped it. Did you cook for him? Yes. Wow, what a real Southern. Yes, he did. Southern woman. But Uh so he was not, I think, who was it? Oh, Joanna was saying that he would eat, he would eat like fast food all the time, but say he was like really sticking to the plan. Was he like regimented with his nutrition when he was in your life? No. No? Not at all. Burgers and fries? Mm-hmm. This dude's wild. Was he taking steroids openly? I mean, I wouldn't say openly, but yeah. <laughs> you knew? Yeah. Was he losing hair back then? Man, I feel like I, I don't know what... Where uh, which tree I was hiding under because I couldn't tell if you if he was losing hair. Well, I he probably just traumatized you into like blinders. You know, mm, this is pretty, what happened. Probably. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel like all the men I've dated are bald, so I wouldn't be able to tell if someone's losing hair. So you're actually like, oh, that. Dick, you have a lot of hair. This is is very That's thick what I and nice. Oh my goodness. Right. Oh my goodness. Well, he's losing his hair now, and his face looks like he's on prednisone, so uh, maybe he's taking the wrong kind of steroids. But this is not a shit-talking podcast. This is factual. So, um... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, one more Mm -hmm. question. Did you experience uh, the roid rage? No. No, just regular, pure rage. Just manipulative bullshit. Right. Well, I think that I'm super happy that you're not with him and that you have your puppy. I know. He's doing the most right now. Like, he's like, oh, let me on camera, mom. He, I see two paws underneath the door right now. Like, this is real shit. He's like, truthfully, Hello. truthfully, I think that maybe you should just, you should probably just go get him and show him to the camera. Like, okay, real, I, will. Real. I will. Everybody, this is my child. He is a child. This is the caboose of my children. <laughs> so, hold on. Let me go grab him. He's so cute. He's probably going to embarrass me. Lucky to we, not won't, embarrass we won't me. judge you based off of your cute puppy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's so cute. Come on. All right, Rocky. He's a dog. When you were with Dick, did you have a dog back then? Or is this your... your no, no. No. Okay. This is... Oh, are we really going to snort? Are you going to do this on camera? Come on. Put your ears up. Why are you sticking them down? You're mad at me. <sighs> I know. Oh, my gosh. He's so cute. I love him. Show him your gold chain, Rocky. That's Say so hi. cute. Why, why are I wish I could give Monza a gold chain. It would cost a million dollars, so I feel like. I love him so much. Oh, my goodness. I know. Well, girlfriend, yeah. I know you have to be up for work in the morning, so I don't want to. I don't want, but I do love your dog. And um, I love him. Thank you for thank you for doing this. I know that you said you were nervous before and you're like, I'm doing this for you. And like, I I appreciate that so much. And I know that everybody else listening to like, yeah even if it's not the most traumatic story it just adds to like the entire narrative that like it is intentional it's predatorial and people need to like watch out and know the signs and so i think that you know you should feel good about helping women men whoever the fuck is listening like be able to get themselves out of something that they don't want to be in and from your perspective being being a mother right the importance of you made the right choice what mm-hmm. what does it look like for somebody who makes the wrong one and how do how do we differentiate between the right and the wrong so right 
I I'm thankful, you know, that I worked so many night shifts and I watched your podcasts on my night shifts because mm-hmm. if I wouldn't have and paid attention to everything, I wouldn't be here, you know, talking about everything. And I, I literally felt everything you were going through. Well, thank you for, for supporting me in that way. And I, I appreciate it. And I'm glad that I'm glad now that I have a a beautiful girlfriend down in Louisiana because I'm not going to lie. I want to go down there and do like New Orleans for real because the last time I was there was not a good time. Um, It'll be like girls trip. You know that movie? Yeah. Except we won't pee on the zip line. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, Again, my name is Amanda Arnier and this is the Dichotomy Diaries. Everyone. Bye. Kylie says goodbye. And it's not over yet till you taste regret. It's not over.